Hello everyone! Today we're going to learn about Chrome Developer Toolbar and how can you use it to do your testing more efficiently. Some of those tips will be probably well known to you, but some of them will blow your mind. Or at least I hope. Ready? Let's go! Before we begin, let's learn how to open DevTools. There are multiple ways of doing that uh, with a keyboard or with a mouse. So with a keyboard you can click F12 and here you go. Or you cannot see my uh, keyboard, but trust me, I click F12. Uh, and also you can do Control Shift I, which will cause the same result. So uh, and with a mouse you can do right click inspect, and you have the Dev Toolbar, and you can go into this Kebab menu, More Tools, Developer Tools. Now we know how to open it, and let's start with something very simple. It is actually hard to spot some of the errors. They might appear, but they will not be visible to your eye. So my advice is to keep the console open. All the errors will pop up here. And while you're doing your exploring or testing, you might spot some subtle errors. An example here is, is if I search for bugs in the Google and refresh the page, you can see there is no errors. But if I do the same in Microsoft Bing, uh, you can see that Microsoft Bing is not testing that well as Google does. Now we move to the network tab. Uh, sometimes during your test you might want to check do I talk to my API correctly or not. And it's, it could be very hard to achieve because if you look at, at, the, con at the network console there's like a whole bunch of stuff that's going on and it's very hard to find the request you're searching for. So tip number one is you can narrow down the uh, request by its type. So in this case we want to search for uh, XHR requests which are fetch requests from, from the backend. So you can see that it's way easier. We only have five requests and uh, if you look at the, at the actual request you can see that that was the request which gave us the data. Is a response. Another way of doing that is just using the filter. If you know the endpoint name, you can use the path of the request to narrow it down even better. So if I go back to all and if I do this search, I can see this request here. Oh, it's actually this one. Another cool tip of what you can do with request is you can copy it and then, for example, import it into Postman to do further testing in there. So you can choose, for example, copy, right click, copy, uh, copy as curl, and then in the Postman you can import raw text, paste your request. Now you have your request and you can modify the, uh, because let's see if it works. It works, you see that there is a response and you could modify it and uh, do further testing of the API if you wish to. Most of you probably know that, but uh, you could throttle the network to figure out how your uh, website gonna load on the real life uh, uh, computers of the users who doesn't have, let's say, fast broadband internet. If you select, let's say, disable cache, and refresh. Let's look here. Uh, we can see that it it's finished. It's loading in 1.8 seconds, right? If I choose here, for example, fast 3G profile and refresh, let's see how long it's gonna take. It takes quite a bit longer. Okay, so it took 8.5 seconds, and you can choose even slower profile or create your own with a custom uh, network speed to do your testing. You can make this performance simulation even cooler if uh, you go into performance tab and choose the, you need to click on this little cog and you can choose the CPU throttling. Why is this helpful? Well, not everyone use the 8, 16 core, 32 gig of RAM machine. So if you are doing some CPU in intensive let's say landing page with a Santa Claus, a little snow falling. That's a lot of resources required for, to process that kind of JavaScript. So you, it might lag very hard on real life 
office or Chromebook laptops kind of machines. Another cool feature of the network tab is screenshots. Here, uh, how you can enable that, you go into this cog and you say capture screenshot and it says hit Ctrl R to reload. So let's do that. We reload and this strip will appear here of how the page was rendered. Let's look at it. So you can see that that was before refresh and then I refreshed and you can see how the page was rendering uh, kind of layer after layer and you can see that Google is actually pretty good with that it renders the most important thing first and then it renders more stuff so good usability Google another very well known feature is uh, an ability to emulate uh, mobile devices to test your responsive layout other than hidden tricks here let's have a look so this is this little icon is how you enable it and you can see that it's a uh, pretty standard have uh, you can choose the mobile phone here, you can choose the rotation here, nothing very special. But if you pay attention to this line, this line is uh, like giving you a shortcut to switch between the most common mobile device resolutions, which is handy. And you also can, can enhance that by going to this kebab menu and say show media queries. So show media queries will show you these extra lines. These extra lines are the layout breakpoints which you or your team have set up in your CSS as the rules to change the layout. To demo that I switch the tab to images and if I resize it you can see that for example when we move from here to here it's gonna change the four images in a row into three images in a row. And then if we go, let's say here, it's like another rule is being triggered and the images get smaller and so on and so on. So you can test your layout like that. Now let's look at really cool, but not very reliable feature. Uh, you could override your geolocation. To do it, you need to uh, go in your console, click Ctrl Shift P and say show sensors. And the sensors will appear and here you can uh, override your geolocation. So let's say you want to travel to Mumbai as an example. You do that and you also need to clean your browsing history. And you also need to change the location to allow. And you see that it says apply your updated settings, reload this page. You see that now I have some, uh, I don't know what this is, <laughs> but I just traveled to Mumbai. Hooray! Next one is not quite the toolbar feature, but it's a, a browser feature, right? You could create different browser profiles to do different types of testing. Uh, when you try to perform testing wearing a different customer hat or a persona. So for example, here I'm using this uh, normal user profile, which uh, doesn't have basically anything. It's just a user using Chrome. But if I, for example, switch into the uh, user who has a high privacy concerns, right? And go to the Google, I can see how it looks like because I have all these privacy extensions enabled and ad blocker enabled. Or I can switch into, let's say, accessibility test persona. And there I will have the extensions that help me to evaluate accessibility features. That's all I wanted to show you. Did you learn something today? Is there a cool dev toolbar features that I have missed? Let me know in the comments. Reminder to check out my other videos, which will appear on screen somewhere here. And see you next time.